Hi guys, welcome back to Code Switch. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is to install a library called Color Thief. So let's go to the nugget. And here we can search for Color Thief. Let's install the library. All right. So now that our library is installed, now let's go to the program and let's see how wh what we are going to do today. So if you look at this, so suppose you have an image, maybe it is in a base64 format or it is a kind of a URL that points to an image. So what we are going to do today is to convert that into a bitmap format. And once we have the bitmap, we pass it to our generate colors function, passing the bitmap. And then we will specify a number of colors that we need to generate and the library will automatically identify the dominant colors and give us a list of hex value colors. This is what we are going to do today. So let's create the generate color function. So over here, I'm going to write a function to generate the colors from a bitmap. All right. So here, as you can see, we can create a public static a list of colors so i'm going to use i enumerable of string because we are generating hex value colors now the function need to accept a bitmap all right so the bitmap is resolved okay now here we need to excite the library so i'm going to declare a variable for storing the colors then i'm calling the library color thief i'm creating an instance of a color theme from the color thief and there are different methods like we can get the color we can get the palettes so i'm calling the palette method and to the palette i'm passing the bitmap that we got from the function and i'm specifying how many number of swatches i need to create or pattern or the colors i need to generate so i'm going to specify eight eight is the default one okay now these colors if you look it's not a direct hex value it's an object okay so i am interested only in generating the hex value colors so using link i am selecting only the hex value so let's uh, call the select and i only interested in the color right color and i'm converting that into to hex you can either go for hex alpha or if transparency is, is what you're looking for or else just like me you can go for hex tree right now i'm converting that to list and i am returning that so this function accepts a bitmap and it will find the dominant colors and it will convert that hex into a list of hex and then we will return back now let's here uh, let's uh, Let's imagine we got few colors by passing a new bitmap. I'm just imagine we pass a new bitmap and we get few colors. Now let's print down these colors into the console. All right. So here, what we are do doing here is to loop through these colors and we are printing down to the console. So this, this is to generate the colors and this is to print it to the output. All right. Now, like we mentioned before, I will show a function that you can take the base64 value. If you have the base64 value, how can we convert that into a bitmap? So let's define a helper function that accepts a base64 string and converts that into a bitmap. So the return type is bitmap and I'm naming the function base64 to bitmap and it should accept a long string of base64. So let's create the base64 string. All right. So now that we have set up that, now let's create a uh, variable to store the bitmap. So I'm creating a bitmap variable result. Now let's define a byte buffer, right? So I'm going to define a byte array. And what we are going to use this byte array is to convert that 
base 64 string into a byte this is what we are going to do right now now that we get the bytes from the base 64 now what we are going to do is we initialize a memory stream we on the stream within the stream we are actually converting that into a we are casting that out as a bitmap so let's create a memory stream and into the memory stream we can pass the buffer the byte buffer that we created so let's initialize the memory stream it's coming from the system root IO and pass the byte buffer that we obtained all right now let's set the position of the memory stream to zero so that will move the cursor from the start of the stream all right now that actually we need to convert that memory stream data into a bitmap so the the default bitmap class supports converting from a memory stream to a bitmap so let's cast it as bitmap and within the bitmap class there is a static method to get the data to get the bitmap from the memory stream so i'm calling the bitmap from from stream and passing the memory stream now that we got the bitmap in the result now what you can simply return the result and uh, before that you need to close the memory stream now i'm going to return the result now we pass a base 64 and this will convert that into a bitmap all right now let's take the second example suppose if you have a link a url that points to an image so we need to download the image and we need to convert into bitmap i'm going for an old method like uh, i'm going to use the web client which is actually ob obsolete or it is not using now but just for the sake of demo i'm showing that so this function actually accepts a url and from the URL it downloads the data and converts into a bitmap. So let's call the open treat and to the read we are passing the url so this will actually opens the url and streams the data right and it's a synchronous method so now what we are going to do is we are initializing the bitmap with that stream so that means the bitmap constructor will take the stream and it will generate a bitmap now that we have all the methods to convert the image url to the bitmap and uh, to convert the base 64 to the bitmap and we have the main generate colors function right now let's try to test this so suppose i have a url of an image so say image url and as you can see this is our channel and our channel logo is this one but let's take a different logo let's let's say google uh, logo or something okay so the google logo you can see and I'm going to take uh, maybe the chrome logo so let's take the chrome logo as you can see there are multiple colors here there is green there is red there is blue there is yellow let's open it so that we will get the link so this is the link of the image so I'm going to pass this link and try to test the dominant colors from this image okay so I have the link right now now using the function that we created I'm converting that link the the link that points the image into a bitmap so i'm calling the function image url to bitmap and i'm passing the url now now that we got the bitmap image on the image variable now this image variable we are passing to the generate color function and once we get we will return the results and we will show that on the console so let's try to start the program by putting a debugger All right, so now the program is running. Now if we look at here, we have the image URL. Now we convert that image URL into an image. Right, now we got the bitmap over here. All right, it has the size. And we got seven different colors we generated, right? Now we are going to print out this. Now let's try to run this. Yeah, 
we got seven different hex colors. Now let's verify this, right? So let's copy these hex colors. And now that we can open a color verifier website. So here we can specify a list of hex colors and it will show what colors they are. So we have used a chrome image for this. We can click on this show colors. As you can see, all the colors, all the dominant colors from the chrome is actually fetched and generated very quickly. Right. Now let's try for a base 64. So this is our channel image and I've converted that into a base 64. Right. Now let's copy the base 64 format. All right. Now let's create the base 64 string. So now that it's a contained image, not a URL. This base 64 contains the image. Okay. Now here I'm calling the method that we generate, the helper method that we generated, that is the base64 to image. And I pass in the base64 image. Right. Now let's try to run this. So we have a violet image as the dominant color. And it generates the colors. Now let's copy the color. And verify it. Filter out the color. And verify. Look, all the dominant colors from that image, the code switch image, is actually generated. So this is how we can easily generate colors within the .NET code. Thank you.